Hi guys, Sally, welcome back here. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about how we can control our ball flight. So, sometimes you get to the course and you're just not going to play very well. You're going to make a swing, you're going to hit the ball, it's going to feel like it's going to be dead straight and it's going to slice 30 or 40 yards. Sometimes it's going to hook out of control. And really, when we talk about having control of our golf game, what we mean here is that we're going to be able to control not only the face angle to get the type of shot we want, but also the path, more inside out, more right to left, to be able to, to, to change the type of shot whenever we get offline. So it's not really gonna be perfect the very first swing of the day. You're gonna get off track time and time again. We gotta learn how to get back on track. So I'm gonna grab a few golf balls here. And some of the best ball strikers of all time, if you listen to Hogan, if you read his book, he talks about uh, he'll have the caddy. This is back when they had caddies out in the fairway. He would hit to the caddy and he would work on the trajectory of his shot. He would work on getting the, the curvature just like he wanted, and then he would go through the bag, you know, starting out with lower irons, working up into the longer irons, and getting that shot shape just like he wanted, tweaking things until it was perfect. I just watched an interview with, with Bubba Watson yesterday, and he was talking about how he always worked on hitting different types of shots. He only had one club when he started out. He's hitting wiffle balls in his backyard, and he's trying to see, can I hit it lower to make it go a little farther, higher, get the ball to curve right, curve left. Same thing with Trevino. So that's exactly what we're going to do here today. Now, in order to do this, what I really want you to be able to do is to really get that ball to turn over right to left and get it to turn over left to right. And I'm going to give you a couple little cheat things that you can do here to be able to get that right away. So let's start out with the one I think gives people the most amount of trouble is getting that ball to kind of curve right to left and, and turn on over. So if I have my normal setup, let's go ahead and grab an alignment rod out of my bag. I'm going to say that this is going to be pretty much straight ahead down the middle of the fairway. That should be about right. Now, if I want to get this ball to turn over from right to left, I'm going to hit some little mini, almost like chip shots here. I'm going to first line up my feet a little bit more to the right. I'm going to go ahead and cheat a little bit here, make it easier. I'm going to close my face a little bit, and then I'm going to put my ball slightly back in my stance. That's going to help me to get this, this swing path going out to what's going to be toward those trees. That's what it's going to feel like to me. And then I want to make sure that my face is very closed. You know, so instead of it being square like that, I'm going to feel like my face is very closed and pointing over to the left. And when I do those two things together, that's going to get that ball to curve. So when you're practicing this, take over a bucket of balls, drop down about 20 or 30 of them, and see if you can get just a nice little, you know, we'll go with a six iron here, a nice little 30 or 40 yard shot, and get that ball to turn on over a good four to five yards. More than that, if you can, if you can get to turn over 10 or 15 yards, that'd be fine too. So I'm going to try to hit a nice easy one so you can still see this on the camera. And we'll notice this one really starts to curve from right to left. So hopefully you can see that. That ball curved probably 10 or 15 yards right to left. Now once we've done that, we're starting to get a feel. Again, we're going to do that 15, 20 times, get that feel of that ball turning over. Now we're going to go the opposite direction. I want to get that ball to turn over left to right 10 or 15 yards if I can. So here's my square setup. I'm gonna go ahead, set up to the left. Get crazy with it. Get your feet 45 degrees to the left. We're not trying to get that perfectly fine-tuned two or three yard draw or fade right now. We're trying to really get that ball to move. Put the ball a little bit up in your stance. What that's gonna do is now I'm gonna be able to swing to the left a little bit easier. My face now is gonna be wide open. I'm pointing my face over to the tree and I'm feeling like I'm doing this, holding the face open as I'm coming through. So if I try this out, I should be able to get these. The, the fades aren't typically going to curve as much, but I should be able to get this to, to fade five or 10 yards also. There we go. So that one turned on over. Hopefully it didn't get too high to get out of the frame, but that one definitely started curving from left to right. Again, 15, 20 balls. Have some fun with it. See, play a game. See how much you can get it to curve. Start to make longer swings. I'm trying to swing fairly easy here so you can see them on camera. Try to see if you can get it to start out in the left rough and curve all the way over into the right rough and then do the opposite of that. Now once we've done those, we're trying to learn low and high now. And this is going to give you, once I can do left, right, low and high, now i got control of the club. Whenever my ball flight starts to do something I don't like, I can tweak and adapt and hit the different types of shots just like you see the PJ Tour players do. So when I'm going to hit a low shot, I'll put it slightly back in my stance. So let's say that normally it's off the left ear logo of my shirt. I'm going to put it a little bit back in my stance and then now, as I'm coming through, I'm not going to try to chop down in this ball, but I'm going to try to take all the loft off this club. So make sure first that your hips are open, where it be at impact. My hands are well forward, and look at my left wrist. My left wrist is bowed down to where I feel like the back of my left glove, back of my glove, pointed all the way to the ground. 
and my right hand is angled back this way, that's going to allow me to take all the loft off of this club. Another way to feel this, taking that loft off, if you pause halfway down, really feel like you close that face this way, and that's going to allow me to get that more forward shaft lean a lot easier. The more I close this face, the more forward shaft lean I can get. So I'm going to really exaggerate it here. I'm going to see if I can keep this ball about three or four feet off the ground as I hit a little 30 or 40 yard shot to see just how low I can go. There we go, so really low, and again, I'm hitting little punch shots here. You can go faster and faster as you get more comfortable. I just want to be able to keep it low so you can see it on the camera, hit some easy shots. Now I'm gonna do the opposite of that. Let's say I'm behind a tree, I wanna hit it higher, or let's say I get out there and I'm hitting it too low, I want it to carry a little farther. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let this club face, or let this club shaft release. So as in the last one, I had a lot of forward shaft lean. This shaft is really leaned forward. This wrist is bowed, this wrist is angled back. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let that shaft release a little bit more so that it feels like it's more vertical at contact. Now, I still want a little bit of forward shaft lean. I don't wanna go ahead and take and do a flip like this, but I wanna have most of that shaft lean gone to get the ball nice and high. And again, play a game. See if you can hit it 100 feet up in the air, you know, as, as high as you can go and as low as you can go, and you're gonna to start to develop a feel. So here, I'll go nice and easy, but you'll see the difference between that last shot for sure definitely higher. If I swung harder than that, I could get it way up in the air, but you probably won't be able to see that one on camera. So once I can do that, now I have complete control of my club. The last thing here I want to make sure that you guys understand is you're not going to be able to do this the first day. You're not going to be able to just jump up there and hit a big draw, hit a big fade, hit it low, hit it high on the first swing. It takes years to develop that kind of thing, but you're going to have a pretty good feel for it just after a couple weeks practicing that or even after a month of practicing that, if you do it every time you go to the range, you're gonna feel a lot more confident with it. But after I get the big movements, now I can go ahead and do the, the fine tune the small movements. So here, to end it off, let's see if I can make a good swing. I'm gonna play a nice draw, high draw, turn over from right to left. Hopefully we'll be able to see this on camera. And uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can control my ball flight. There you go, that ball went right down the middle, turned over about three or four yards right to left, nice and high, hit that one pretty well. I started to get a feel for the club, learned how to change and adapt the club face to get the type of shot that I want, work hard on that. It's a lot of fun, play some games, and uh, just have a good time with you guys. I'll see y'all later. All right, guys, I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got a great bonus for you. We all want lag in our golf swing. We know that is crucial, getting a lot of lag and then releasing that to get a lot of speed has to happen. I'm gonna play a bonus video that goes over one of my number one lag drills out there. I'm gonna show you how the pros do it and how you can do the right takeaway to improve your lag right away. So that preview of that video is gonna come up here in a second. Just click the link that pops up on your screen. If you're on a desktop device, if you're on a phone or a tablet, go ahead and click the I card. You'll get instant access to it. Click that thumbs up, that really helps us out. Remember to subscribe so you'll get our latest videos and I'll see you on the lag video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. I wanna use the full...